Okay. Okay, good evening and welcome to the August 8th, 2022 meeting of the Planning and Land Use Committee of the Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council. Um, I'm gonna take roll first, Jason Herring. Here. Uh, Linda Alexander, no. Rock Ashfield. Here. Uh, Dan Dixon. Here. Craig Goldfarb. Here. Pat Nave. Pat Nave can't hear you. I know you're there. You're still having microphone problems. Uh, Chuck Hart. Here. Here. And Diana Nave. So we have- Dan, why, not, Nice ceiling fan, Dan. Why isn't it on? <laughs> <laughs> what would hit me in the head, Rock? Chuck has got his on, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, Maybe I, I'll have to correct that. I'll be right back. I'm having dog issues. Right back. <laughs> I, I also want to um, welcome any members of the public. You will have an opportunity to provide comments on each agenda item before any action is taken. If you have a comment on an item that's not on the agenda, you may provide your comment during the public comment portion of the meeting. And Pat Nave, if you want to make comments, I think you're going to have to come into my office or take my laptop because you don't seem to be able to be heard. Um, so our main item tonight is really, this is really a one, one item agenda. And that has to do with the proposed storage on Miraflores Avenue. In June, the Excuse joint- Excuse me, the joint, sorry. I'm gonna have to leave. You have to leave, okay. It's, it's right. I have to recuse myself right. from this. So that's okay. the only item on the agenda then. Um, excuse me from the rest of the meeting, please. Will do, thank you. Thank you. You know, Craig lives within 500 feet of the proposed facility, so he's excusing himself, recusing himself. Um, at, in June, at the joint committee meeting, the developers showed the plans um, for building a self-storage facility uh, at 825 Miraflores, directly behind the animal shelter. The proposed facility would be two stories, 37,000 square feet, with 20 parking stalls and the vehicular entrance off Cabrillo. The proposed hours of operation is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. with staff present Monday through Saturday from eight to five. Lots of internal cameras to help them control for unapproved uses such as sleeping in units or storage of flammable materials. There will be no outside storage. And it also will be external lights. So at that meeting, there were a couple of issues that came up. The first one was they, they were asked to consider changes to the exterior to make it blend in better with the Mediterranean style of the neighborhood. And the second was a request that they look at preserving the pine trees along Rio Avenue. And then at our last meeting, it seemed that, that members of this committee were generally in favor of the project. Jason suggested that we consider recommending that they add a coffee shop to the Miraflores side of the building to activate the corner and to be a gathering point for community residents. The committee decided they wanted to get more input from the residents. I contacted the homeowners organization and that, that represents about half of the area and their president, Honey. Oh, I'm not the Honey president. Here tonight. I'm a member at large. Oh, you're not the president? No, I'm not. Member at large, okay. She's yeah. here tonight. The other half of the area does not have a homeowners association, but I was able to speak with one of the nearby residents who I guess decided not to attend tonight. So I think the place to start is to have Honey give us um, <clears throat> a summary of the discussion that the homeowners had about the project. Honey? Okay, so um, forgive me, I have some notes here. Uh, <clears throat> I wrote an email um, to the, I believe it was to you guys, the Northwest Neighborhood Council. Um, it, we, after the homeowners board met to discuss the proposal. And I think gen, in general, the uh, association is in favor of the development. However, uh, the coffee shop, the reason I asked about the coffee shop is because that seemed to spark the most controversy. And then it was, um, I believe I was told that it was, it was somebody's wishful thinking, which I'm sure will, uh, 
mollify the the residents because people were concerned that it might turn into a uh, another homeless hangout and that that street in particular seems to attract um people who like to camp there park there for days at a time and and uh, there's a lot of transient walking through there because of the park leland park and the then up our area because of access to the peck park canyon area so um some of the questions were actually about the way that the development looks i mean as long as there's no coffee shop i don't think there's any controversy uh they like the idea of the um fenced or gated parking lot on the cabrillo street side um and felt like it would be uh, more professional than what we have now. With, but with what we have now, really, when I'm sort of struck when you said Mediterranean style architecture, it just sort of looks like a mishmash of everything there to me. So um, let's see. It seems like a responsible business owner would mitigate the homeless loitering or parking in the area. Maybe that was question mark. Um, do, do, do. Nobody wanted it to be a hangout for homeless folks, so that's good that they'd be monitoring the place to make sure that um, people wouldn't be residing in, in the um, facility. However, uh, there's a parking question that came up, and that is right now we have a lot of, there's a trucking uh, group that business that I don't know if they park on the Cabrillo side in the fenced area back there, but they also have um, part of their trucks and trailers parked in a, um, I guess it's a lot that's on uh, Miraflores. And the problem is when they all come out in the morning or during the day, they clog up the street. And so you were continually trying to move in and around them. And so, with regard to the proposed facility, we're wondering how that was going to work because um, I would say that's probably the biggest source of, of uh, traffic nuisance for us right now as residents. So um, Judy Lee is here and so is Erica Gucci. Um, I don't know which one of them would like to, looks like Eric would like to respond. So I'm going to let Actually, I'm going to promote Eric to a panelist here for this purpose. Are they the developers? Yeah, Eric. Yeah, they're the property owner slash developer. I'll let Eric introduce himself. Yeah, my name is Eric Gucci. I'm I'm the developer slash project manager for the project. Thank you again for your for your time today. Uh, I'll respond to a few of the concerns. The it, it frankly doesn't sound like an issue. The coffee shop. Whether we thought it was a good idea or not is simply not allowed by the uh, by your zoning code. And as I'm sure you're all aware, it, it's, a, it's a very heavy lift to get those allowable uses changed. With respect to the homeless, yeah, I, we see a few community benefits here. I, I won't belabor you with them all. One being mitigation of sound from the uh, from the animal shelter as well as beautification of the street. But but with the construction of a, of a new center or a new uh, self storage facility. We'll be able to invest in uh, additional security measures, and you know, frankly, I I just had my own self storage facility, my own self storage unit broken into uh, a month ago. So personally speaking, we just couldn't have. We would be much more vigilant in policing the uh, the street for uh, for um, for the homeless folks uh, looking to to break into the facility. With respect to the trucks, that is a bit of a response to the homeless as well. That uh, rear area was becoming a bit of a. They were they were jumping the fence and, and hanging out there. Uh, we liked we liked more activity there temporarily um, to keep those 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 folks on their toes. Now, when the facility is built, we will not allow any trucks, uh, large trucks like there, to park anymore. So I believe right now we do have a cabinet maker um, that also brings in trucks. Um, the nature of the facility is not going to allow large trucks like that. Maybe maybe a small moving van from time to time, but really this is envisioned as kind of a facility for, in my mind, in the way we're designing it, is gonna be more for, for residents 
moving into those small apartments in, uh, in San Pedro, uh, and they'll need more, you know, closet size space. So that, that's. Um, so, so uh, honey, honey, hold on a minute. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, you know, in the, the committee, when you want to speak, you're going to need to raise your hand. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to ask Eric a couple of questions. Um, okay. Did I hear you say something? I'm not sure I heard you correct. Did you say something about repaving the street? Or did I misunderstand uh, that? I, I did not okay. mention that, but, but given how public works is, is in, in, uh, in the city, they, that may be a condition. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I know we're going to have to fix all the curb and sidewalk. That, that's a given. Fix the curve and sidewalk. Is that what you said? That, that's they're they're going to send what would have they're going to send a team out, look at the condition of the curb and sidewalk, at least the curb and sidewalk. Maybe Judy can speak to this better than I do. It's just that she does this much more often than I do in the city of LA, mm -hmm. and we'll have to repair that. Um, but Judy, maybe you can comment on that. That's okay. Um, sure. Um, it's very likely that Public Works is going to require us to replace all the. Um, broken uh, sidewalk, curb, and gutter. Um, the repaving will probably depend on um, the changes that we have to make the street to the street to accommodate any utilities, for example, for uh, like a fire service. When I was last out there, it didn't look like it was recently repaved. So it's unlikely that public works, even if we had to dig up the street, um, in connection with the utility um, installation is going to require us to repave the entire street. They're likely just going to require us to repair um, whatever changes we make in connection with our um, our utility installation. Thank you. I had a, a, yeah, I was just trying to clarify because I didn't hear very well what was being said. I was just trying to make sure I got it correct. But my other question, I noticed from the notes that I took at the joint committee meeting, that the note said that you were going to provide short-term and long-term parking. So I guess my question is, is that correct? And if so, what do you mean by long-term parking? So that's probably with regards to bicycle parking. So the zoning code requires us to provide short-term and long-term bicycle parking. Oh, okay. It doesn't make a distinction with regard to um, temporary versus, or excuse me, short-term versus long-term with regard to automobile parking spaces. Yeah, believe it or not, we'll have outdoor short-term parking for our office folks, and we'll have to have indoor long-term parking for, for some reason. <laughs> so the parking, the outdoor parking will be just for people as they're dropping their things off? Right. And for the people that are working there. It's not, right. a, you're not anticipating people keeping their cars there. Not at this time. No. Okay, and I, now, honey, did you have a question? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, so is the entrance to the proposed facility going to be on Cabrillo Avenue? Because <clears throat> I think one more driveway on Mirror Floors is just going to add to the current congestion. So Correct. So there, there are, I guess there are technically two curb cuts on Mirror Floors because there is, this, this parcel divided into two. Um, so we'll be eliminating both and we'll only have one entrance on Cabrillo. Okay. And that will, um, so people won't be able to park in the, on the street in the front of the facility, all the parking will be on Cabrillo. Is that correct? No, people will be able to park in Mira Flores because that's a public street. We can't preclude anybody from parking on Mira Flores. But that'll be regular street parking, not, not, uh, angled parking where people stick out. No, regular street parking. Yeah. And and does is the proposed facility taking over the current building that's on that property or are you going larger than that? It'll it'll be demolished and it'll be larger than that. I think right now we're around oh, I, I want to guess ten thousand square feet, maybe a little less. So are you taking over like I'm trying to envision how big this thing actually is going to be? Is it going to cover where the old repo lot is as well? Yes. Yes, yes. Further than that, so are you banking, are you gonna be right up against the animal shelter? We'll be right up against the animal shelter. And I think about 20 feet from where the hill starts to slope downwards. Oh, so you're not going all the way up the hill. You're just- No, definitely no, we can't do that. 
So what's going to be in back of your uh, facility? Uh, just hill, the hill and a little back area. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we okay. have we have to be set back about twenty feet from the hill. And will there be people on the property twenty four hours a day? And when no. you talk, to no, no, no. So self storage facilities historically have been open twenty four hours for for clients, but as I mentioned, my self storage facility was broke. My unit was broken into. And so self-storage facilities no longer are open 24 hours. They're only, they're only open from seven to seven generally nowadays, maybe seven, it's about seven a.m. to 7 p.m. to prevent, mm -hmm. to, to not allow people to stay in there and start tunneling into other units. Mm -hmm. You will only have somebody on site eight to five generally, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe uh, Sunday through Friday. I, I think they have one day off. And but you talked about a more vigilant approach. So how do you propose to do that? Uh, security cameras. You know, we'll have folks going in and out. And frankly, who wants to enter a shelter where they're harassed by a, or enter a uh, facility where they may be harassed by by homeless folks? So we'll you know it, it, we're spending a lot of money on this facility, and so we're going to have to spend a lot of its brand, and it's going to have to be reflective of that. You know that. So that Cabrillo is going to have to be reflective of that. So this is it's going to totally be a, a storage facility and no offices only for the personnel who are taking doing the intake oh, and yes, that, only a small office for sales and personnel. Yeah, we cannot. Yeah, we can't do a pure office here. We can do office associated with industrial. This is industrial zoning. We, we really we're, we're pretty limited on on service service oriented uses or uses that would you know be open to the i guess the regular public for lack of a better word like coffee shops office um retail and and with regard to the the pine trees are you going to be able to leave those alone and and allow the the sort of natural environment to stay in place i'll, I'll be honest pro probably not i think 80 to 70 percent of those pine, pine trees are going away but we are going to be re replacing all the landscaping with new landscaping, more manicured landscaping. Which, so are you talking about removing the pine trees that are um, in the back there, the border of the park? No, those are the, I, those are going to, I'm looking at the rendering here or the aerial here. Those are the park trees. Uh, I, I don't believe we can, if, if they're on the park side and the slope, we're not going to touch those. Okay. We're, which, we're talking which about the trees, trees on Cabrillo. Are, the trees on Cabrillo. Trying to think of the trees on Cabrillo. There must only be like one or two. Well, yeah. What is oh, the reason that you can't save the trees on Cabrillo? Uh, because of the the constraints of the site. I, I I think those trees are already in a pretty narrow parkway. Um, we're gonna have to put a retaining wall up against there, and I I just don't want to commit to saving the trees because the way trees work is that their root ball reflects their their drip line, and I think. The trees, the tree branches are already outside the drip line. I, I, I've been in this situation before. I, I just couldn't save them. It, it's, it's a pretty, yeah, right. That's exactly right. Oh, you're going to get rid of all of those. That's, that's what's likely going to happen. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Really? Wow, that's that's a lot. So, so what would it take to save them? Um, I think some good luck. I mean, again, if you look at the right, if you look at right there, they're in that parkway. That's a very narrow parkway. And it's frankly pretty interesting how the trees have, have sustained for so long. They've out, they, they, the root ball is probably well, it's probably pretty far underneath the underneath the street at this point. But you know, we're going to be grading and you know hitting the, hitting the slope pretty hard um we're not going to be impacting the sidewalk um i i just can't commit to saying that we're going to say, be able to save those trees but now there, there's going to be parkway there we, uh, we have to have plant planting there but just because of the nature of urban infill development it's wow. going to be tough okay i'm going to recognize pat nave who has his hand up let's see if we can hear you pat Nope, we can't hear you. So, honey, did you have something else while we'll waiting for Pat to come by to a microphone? 
Well, I'm, I guess I'm dismayed about the trees. That I understand what you're saying, Mr. Higuchi. Um, it's just, you know, this area is sort of prides itself on having um, an environment that is um, pro wildlife, if you will. You know, we've got all kinds of, um, of course, critters, birds, owls, hawks, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, and um, I think part of it is because of the habitat and, and the, you know, the, well, obviously the trees that are there as well as some of the more wild um, areas. So I'm dismayed. I mean, I don't know what the alternative is, but I'm, I'm, I'm really dismayed about the trees having to come down. The, yeah. the replacement. Oh, go ahead. Sorry for what for what it's worth. The replacement trees will be African sumac. Um, we've got three planted there. We can we can do more. Yeah, especially you know with climate change and what have you, and knowing that trees are so good for getting out the carbon dioxide or soaking up the carbon dioxide. You know, in the environment, it's so warm and hot in this canyon. Anyhow, you know, it's right. it every every. Every tree is precious. I don't mean to sound like a tree hugger, but I do, do you know, I hope you understand where I'm coming it's from. It's LA, I, I get it, yeah. Thank you, honey. Pat and Abe? Didn't we have in, in our proposed uh, comments before to, to, to save those trees? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, why don't we get the uh, city's uh, forestry guy, tree guy out there to have a look at it, see if we can anyway. These things look like they have a pretty deep red ball. They're not taking up the sidewalk. So forth. If you could build your facility and save those trees, would you do it? I'd sure do it. Yeah. If you can get if, we, if you can get us help us relief on our setback requirements, I'd be more than happy to do it. What are your setback requirements from the uh, curb line or this path of sidewalk? Um, I think we have an issue with. Oh boy, it's really testing me here. Let's see. I'd have to get back to you on that, uh, Pat and Diana. Okay, please do. Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, Jason is next. Oh, Jason, you're muted. Jason, we can't hear you yet. Can you hear me now? Now yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, great. Stupid thing. What did you do? Sorry, I'm going to copy what you did. <laughs> I have two microphones in the system, and it randomly grabs the wrong one at times. And then frustrating. Um, no, I was going to say these are very tall, older growth trees. The root <laughs> structure is going to be very deep on these. So um, I, I think that you're not going to interfere with the primary root structure. Most of the water that these trees are gathering is going to be significantly below the surface where they break surface. So I, I don't think that you're necessarily going to disturb the root ball as much, but I would second Pat what Pat said. I was thinking the same thing as have someone from forestry to take a look and see if there's a way we could preserve these because something like this is not only just a wonderful shade and visual barrier, um, but it just adds to the overall ambiance being near the park, near the entrance mm -hmm. of the park. Uh, I don't know how big the African sumac gets, but I don't think it's going to get as tall as these pines. Right, right. We're constantly cutting down old growth big trees replacing them with these stubby little street trees that barely get above the height of your roof. Uh, so it's a trend we're slowly losing our urban forest to mm -hmm. these little decorative trees which barely block eye level to the, the building behind it. So so um, if there's anything we can do to help uh, by putting con making some contacts with people or anything we can do, let us know because we'd be very interested in keeping these trees. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I do recall that the we had some issues with yeah, minimum depth requirements on these on these planters. I'll, I'll get with Judy and talk. About that it's, it's, it's been a few months since we talked we talked about that. But it, you know, preserving those trees probably saved us money as well. So um, mm -hmm. I'll, we'll look into it. <laughs> and if you have some like, um, I mean, we'd be glad to write a very supportive letter to the city if you need some sort of help with the easement to keep these things. Um, we'd be able, we'd be very supportive of that. So. Um, much appreciated. Honey? 
Did you yes. have another comment or question? No, no, I just second and third everything that you guys have been saying. I think it would be very meaningful to be able to save the trees. And if there's any way to work around it, I, I think that'd be great. I just think it'd be terrible. To, it, like, like the gentleman would, said, I believe it was Jason, that, you know, they are old growth trees and, and they've been there a long time. And we've had a couple back here that have had to come down due to disease. And it's just awful to see, you know, them not thriving anymore. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Does anyone else have any comments or questions on this? I don't see anyone. Am I missing? <laughs> missing anyone? Okay. The it seems to me that <laughs> I'm gonna stick this out as as what I think is the consensus of the committee and we can vote on it and then I can write it up if that sounds correct to people. And honey, you will not be able to vote because you're not a committee member, okay? Mm -hmm. But you comment. Um, seems to me that, that we want to say that we are in support of the project and maybe say something about the fact that it provides a nice buffer between the animal shelter and, and the houses. That, that there are some things that the um, developer has said to us that we want to make sure happen. One of them would be to fix the curb and sidewalks that there would be no long-term outdoor parking in that parking lot. The, the hours were 7 a.m. to... Um, Five, I was think. It, was it 7 a.m. to 7 p.m.? Um, and then really talk about the pine trees and wanting to save the pine trees and that we would be even be willing to support a... Um, uh, um, a reduction in the setback if it was necessary um, in order to, to save the pine trees and suggest that they um, co consult with the city's forestry officer. So that's that would be my suggested um, motion, which I can write up if, if that's what people are in agreement to. Um, I, I would second that motion. Okay. Any other discussion? Anything I missed that we ought to be putting in there? Um, may I ask how long the construction will take? Uh, so we're, we're still trying to get this approved through planning. So we've probably got two more months there. Thereafter, we probably have another eight months to construct, to uh, draft construction documents uh, and improvement plans and get those permitted. And thereafter, it's probably a six to eight month process to build it. So um, best case scenario, Q1 2024 is when this is built, completed. Okay, are we ready to vote on the motion then? Jason? Yeah. Linda Alexander? Yes. Rock Ashfield? Yes. Dan Dixon? Yes. Uh, Chuck Hart. Yes. Pat Nave. Yes. <laughs> is, is that a yes, Pat? I nod your head. Okay. And then Diana Nave and um, Craig Goldfarb was rec was recused because of the conflict. Thank you, Judy, and thank you, Eric, for for being here. And um, we will be putting together a letter and forwarding it. We'll forward, forward a copy to you all and a copy to the city. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you for your time and okay. service to the city. And maybe, and maybe we can get Jason to call the the city's forestry person. Sure. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thanks, everyone, and thank you, Diana, for um, for coordinating our attendance at the meeting and everything. Appreciate it. Oh, oh, and Judy, just so you know, we'll also send a copy of our letter to Central Neighborhood Council's Planning and Land Use Committee, which Linda Alexander happens to also be on. So. Okay, I just want to confirm that generally because we're appearing before you since the impacts, the potential impacts on the project affect neighbors that are located within your neighborhood council, does the central um, uh, San Pedro neighborhood um, council typically expect us to appear before them too or do they just take your guidance? I think we're out of, we're, you're actually out of our district. So uh, We're technically in your district according to Zemus. Yeah, right it's a, there on really? the yeah, yeah, technically, 
there's there's some census tracts. It's very bizarre line. Oh, gosh. Well, uh, I'll bring it up and try to discourage everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And then uh, one last question. Is it San Pedro or San Pedro? What? What kind of question is that? Pedro. <laughs> Pedro. Well, because I, every everybody who's from there says Pedro. Right. Can we if take I, that vote again? Right. Pedro, I get skewered. See, I that's just got skewered. What kind of question Can we is that? do that vote? That's how they know you're from out of town. That's how we know you're not, Pedro. That's how we know you're not from here is if you say it like that. Well, is it San Pedro or is it just Pedro? It's Pete. Well, I see you're saying the Pedro without the sand. Yeah, the local Sometimes it's Pedro. just Pedro. As long as you got the law me, you're good. Okay. All right. All you right. get the longer involved in our project, by the way. We're 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 firing her. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you all. Um, we all do right. have a, just one, two other quick agenda items. Um, okay. The the first one um, was is just updates on other items of interest, and there are I have one update, and I think Jason has an update. Um, my update is on the proposed Starbucks on Western Avenue. They uh, are actually still in negotiations with the property owner there. And until they finish those negotiations, they're not gonna get their traffic study done. And so until they've got the traffic study, you know, we're not gonna look at it again. So we're waiting. It, it, it sounds Diana, like- where is that? Where is that on Western? Um, it's the old in, the, US in the same yeah. shopping center that the Starbucks is now on Northwestern. Um, it's adjacent to the, Let's see. Oh, Jason. Oh, uh, hmm? Diana. Diana, US they're going to tear out, tear out the old U.S. Bank branch. Yeah, the old That's U.S. Where Bank will be. building. Oh, right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what ha- what's happening with the cocos and all that good stuff? The what? Cocos. Cocos. Yeah, and- cocos is gone. It's a U.S. Bank. All- I know, but the building's still there. Yeah. Really it's all real estate. It's all real estate negotiation. Yeah. So oh, yeah. We, we hate to hear that. So we, 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 So anyway, that's why we haven't brought it back is because they're not ready to, to bring it back. Um, Jason, you had a want to talk about a proposed ordinance. Yeah. So um, there's a proposed oil and gas drilling ordinance by which the city is going to phase out all oil and gas. Um, extraction within the city of Los Angeles, uh, which um, is kind of interesting, uh, which could do a lot to make uh, life in some neighborhoods a lot more pleasant. Uh, So this has been circulated. Let me share this. Uh, So a summary of the draft ordinance is on the left-hand side here. I don't know if you guys can read it, Um, but- I can't see it. it. It says you've started screen sharing, but there's nothing up. Oh, just wait. It's probably just slowly. My computer is busy. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> okay, so on the right is the actual draft ordinance. On the left is a summary of it sent by the uh, Department of Planning. And so I don't know if you can read the small print, but I'll just kind of buzz through it. So they're pleased to announce the release of the pro- proposed oil and gas drilling ordinance for public review and feedback. In response to council file, blah, 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 a uh, proposed oil would gas ordinance would amend the LA Municipal Code to prohibit all new oil and gas drilling activities and make any existing extraction non-conforming use in all zones of the city. So basically they're gonna phase this out and they give them like 20 years to shut down pretty much all the oil rigs that are currently operating within the city of Los Angeles. But you can go through here, I'll, I'll share this with, uh, with the uh, committee and you guys can review this on your own. If you have any comments, we could discuss it um, potentially. Uh, submit that to, to planning. But um, I mean, to me, it sounds like great news. I know we can't discuss it now because it's not agenda, but uh, something to think about. So, And, and I'll add to that. I, I got just part of this meeting and I actually forwarded it to you, Jason. At the plan check meeting this Saturday, someone from city planning will be there to discuss the ordinance. So if anyone's interested in knowing more about this ordinance, they may want to attend the, the plan check meeting. Um, in addition, there will be a public hearing on the ordinance on August 30th. I don't have any more details than that, but I'm sure we will get it. Unfortunately, we, uh, hopefully there's uh, more time to, to respond after the, the public hearing because our board won't be meeting now until September if we want to take a position. So. I mean, there's some serious amount of real estate that is going to be no longer used for extraction in the coming years. Think of the massive thing like over by, um, uh, what is it, the um, 
Kennethon Park over there, um, that huge oil field. Yeah. Uh, that'll all be shut down within 20 years max, right? So that's, that's a lot of potential um, cleaner air and less, uh, less nuisance. So. Does okay. anyone else have any updates? If not, we'll move to public comment. Are there any well, public comments on non-agenda items? Um, I'll just say that we are going to have a waterfront update meeting here in our office uh, the last Thursday in September. So I'll just announce that. And Diana, I had a couple of questions for you, if you didn't mind. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'll have any answers. Well, let's well, well, let's put the cash up there. Let's see what we got. The harbor view. The, I, I'm down here. I drive by it every day. It seems like there's tremendous progress there. Do you know anything specific about it? Well, we not we know what was planned there, and but and they're making progress, as you say. It's, it's 100 right. units total. Right. And, it's and then the one across from Whale and Inlet, I think, is 45, and now we're starting to see the facades come out. Um, which is actually cool. So I didn't know if you know a timeline there at all. I don't have any updates on the timelines okay. for them. I can if you haven't been downtown, check it out. The stuff is going up. Yeah. I actually know what one of the builders um, on that place across from Whale and L, so I could actually ask him. Yeah, if you ask him about that one, ask him about the one over on Fifth Street too. It's the same. It's the same guy. Same guy that's doing both of them. Isn't that Nate uh, Hoba? The what, Linda? I think it's Nate Hoba. Yeah, Nate Hoba. Yeah. What's well, actually the engineer that did the design on the project is who I know, so I can probably get some information. Right. Anything else for the good of the? Um, can I ask something? Yes, you may. Um, and as you, as you know, we've written the city about the brush collection, you know, and and. Uh, removal in the back and you know about the third fire but there's there's quite a bit of brush that still remains and i was wondering if if perhaps the council could support a letter uh to the that supervisor whose information i do have on a somewhere on a business card julio hernandez uh, yeah. about uh you know continuing to clear the area you know because the fire um <coughs> yes this, we've, we've done that in the past, and I think we can easily do it again. Yeah. Um, I'll look Maybe at Jason and see if he'll, he'll, you know what, honey, just send us, I guess you sent me a copy of what you did, right? Yes. I'm going to forward it to Jason pictures. and let him yeah. make it, make, do his magic on it. Okay. If you need more pictures, let me know. I'll be happy to supply them. And one other thing that we learned uh, at the Economic Development Committee meeting Tuesday from the Chamber, West Harbor is slated to secure up to $100 million of financing to build the buildings that should be closed in October. They're presenting before the Harbor Commission tomorrow to ask for an extension for the financing, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And they announced a date for a groundbreaking ceremony. Is that it's sort of a sort of a welcoming for support. They said it's not really groundbreaking, but it'd be, it's October 22nd, it's my brother's birthday. October 27th? 2nd. October 2nd, oh. No, 22nd. 22nd, yeah. That's, I, mean, I thought it was 20 something, yeah. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a celebration of the yes. work getting underway. Anything else? If not, we stand adjourned. And thank you, honey, for coming and representing your, your part of the neighborhood. Appreciate Thank it. you for inviting me. I appreciate it. I appreciate I'll what you guys do. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I kept thinking you were talking to Pat every time you said honey. I know. <laughs> I, thought, I kept thinking Diana doesn't usually call him honey on the on the Zoom. <laughs> oh, that's that's I honey. Think you're honey. <laughs> There's got to be some protocol. Yeah. <laughs> I should I should tell you all that Honey's husband Steve was instrumental in the original plans for the redevelopment of Pike Park Canyon. He he led that committee that that right. um, worked on that, and yeah. he that, that found that there was really a spring down there and got the um, bridges and all of that. That was that was um, 
committee that he led. So nice. Thank, thank you all. Thanks, Diana. Thank you, Diana. And meeting, meeting stands adjourned. <laughs>